I've installed the EG4 6000 XP off-grid inverter, and I wanna show you guys exactly the process that I took and all the connections that I made, including even the clamps that I used on the bottom of this for the knockouts, so that way you get a nice, secure um, pull on those wires, and it's not gonna pull loose from the inverter if you don't have the included box for this that might connect to the EG4 battery. In this scenario, I'm connecting it to a different brand of battery just for uh, the video's sake, so that way you know that this inverter can work with different batteries, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to set that communication up between those two, but we're gonna talk about the communication cable, the battery cable, the load cable, and even a grid cable that's coming in from the grid to charge the batteries if you don't have any solar coming into it, and the solar uh, PV wires that are coming in as well. We have the battery breaker, the load, the grid, and generator. The only thing that I'm not gonna be talking about is a generator, because I don't hook a generator to this, but you definitely can. And although this is an off-grid inverter, it doesn't mean you can't have access to the grid. My recommendation would be to install one of these Reliance Control 50 amp transfer switches. So that way you can have access to both the grid and to your solar generator or your solar power here. So what happens is you got a transfer right here. This can feed into this side of it. And when I have this turned on, then I'm powering everything with this right here and everything's fine and dandy. If the battery's having to go dead or solar is out or the sun's not out for uh, two weeks and I, I can't charge my batteries and I don't have this connection here from the grid, then I don't have any power. But in that scenario with a transfer switch and the grid, I can switch it. And then we have power to whatever it's connected to. So I love the functionality and the flexibility of a transfer switch where I have the grid and solar power at the same time. So I know I'm always gonna have power in case a complete disaster happens where it knocks out my solar system and the grid. Let me cut it in the video here real quick because I want to explain the connection that I just made for the grid. That grid wires that I just made come from here over to this outlet. That's a 50 amp outlet that connects directly to that 50 amp breaker. You're probably not going to have that right there. I need that to be able to change out inverters real quick and be able to test them. In your situation, it's probably going to be a permanent uh, install. So those four wires and that cable, we connected that breaker right there. The red and black into the breaker, the white into the neutral, and the green into the ground bar.
And let's do the same for the load. The load is the circuits that you're gonna be powering. And I'm running this through a transfer switch. So the wires that are connected for the load comes over into the transfer switch, and then it powers these circuits. I just have this connection right here. You would take those four wires more than likely and connect it to your 50 amp breaker. The same thing. You have a red and a black connection to the breaker, a white that goes into your neutral, and the ground wire going into your ground bar. You'll turn on the inverter because now what we want to do is make sure that the communication between the inverter and the battery are taking place. And then we'll go over here and we'll turn on the battery, which will turn on the inverter because we have the battery on right here. So the inverter is now on and running with the, bat with the uh, backup battery. We can now turn on the solar because we do have this connected to solar. So now we're gonna be charging the battery with solar. And for this to communicate correctly with your battery, you need to set the battery type and the battery code. To do that, you'll press and hold enter till you get that double beat. We'll go up until the number three setting. My battery is right here flashing. I'll hit enter. We want that set to Li ion, so the lithium ion. Then we'll uh, go down. I'll show you the different ones: lead acid and then no battery. I don't know why you would ever use no battery in case you just don't have any battery <laughs> connected to it. But you want to connect this to lithium ion. Hit enter, and then your battery brand is right here. Set that to zero for this battery, and then hit enter, and then the inverter will restart. And now you should be able to turn on your critical load center and be able to back it up using your inverter and your battery. The fans have kicked on the inverter because we're charging the battery, but let's turn on our load center. So we'll turn load on. We got everything turned on the inverter. We have our solar coming in, the inverter's turned on, the actual load center's turned on, the battery's turned on, and your EPS is turned on over in the Critical load center, we're gonna switch it from utility to generator, cause this is our uh, backup right now. And then we'll just switch this over real quick. We didn't even get a flicker. And now we're powering with PV first, then battery second, and anything from the PV that is left over is charging the battery. And we do have communication with the battery, as we can see right there, 41% on the battery. If you didn't have any communication, that would just kind of zero out and you wouldn't have anything there. So right now we're at uh, around 40% on the battery. And let's just go over on the battery and confirm that. So in our analog information, 
we'll hit enter and then we'll go down, 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 down to the cell capacity, hit enter and we're at 41%. So we got 41% showing here, 41% showing over on the inverter as well. And this next segment may not be for everyone, but anyone that wants to connect the Wi-Fi to their inverter, you'll want to visit the manual. On page 28, it goes over exactly how to connect the dongle to the inverter. Now, I did have a little bit of a problem connecting the dongle to my Wi-Fi network, and I had to do it through the mobile app. But first, you'll need to create an account and you'll need to get a code from the supplier. So whoever you bought your EG4 6000 XP from, they could provide you with a code to connect the dongle. Once you get that, then you've created your account. Now you need to connect the dongle to your Wi-Fi, and I would recommend doing that through the app. Online, I could not get it to connect, but through the app, you basically log out of the app and then you'll see the actual section where it says connect dongle and that's how you connect it. I was trying to be logged into my account and connect it and I could not find anywhere that would allow me to connect it. But once I, I logged out, I connect dongle, I try to do it through the Wi-Fi. That did not work. So I connected through Bluetooth first and got it to connect here so I could see it on my screen and then went back and reconnected to Wi-Fi and everything works fine now. So there is a little bit of a trick if you're having a problem connecting the dongle to your Wi-Fi, just follow those steps and hopefully that works out for you. If not, of course, reach out to uh, EG4 or the supplier that you got your inverter from and they'll walk you through the process and get you connected with no problem. But I, eventually I got it connected. It was pretty simple, but I had the most problem finding where to actually click something that says connect to Wi-Fi. And I did that in the mobile app. And now that we got everything up and running the way it should be, I do want to go over a couple things that I should mention that maybe you should change about your install versus mine. Mine's a temporary setup, so I don't have the wires in conduit. Always put your wires in conduit. It's a lot safer. It's to code. In my scenario, I do this for testing and I interchange these inverters and batteries so much that it would just make it extremely hard for me to take everything out of conduit and reinstall it. So I leave it like this, but my recommendation is definitely put it in conduit. Also, when you're installing inverters or batteries on the wall like we have here, it should be on a non-combustible wall. So this OSB board is considered combustible. So you'd want to put something like a hardy backer board or a cement board back here. But if you're installing this on a tile wall, block wall, brick wall, or something like that, you don't have to do anything else. They have anchors that you can just install into those non-combustible walls and get it nice and secure. But those are definitely two points that I think that I needed to go over because you do not want to do the wiring like this and you do not want to put it on a combustible wall. This is a temporary setup, but I did want to provide you with an installation process of the 6000 XP. And maybe you're looking for different batteries other than the EG4 batteries. Maybe you're looking for Sun Gold Power, these wall mounted batteries like this. If you are, I did do a full install video on this SunGo Power SG48 100M battery that shows how to install it and to get it to communicate with the EG4 6000 XP. Look for the links in the description below and I'll try to put a card right up here. And that was my method of installing the 6000 XP. Hopefully you found something useful in this video. If you did, smash the thumbs up button. I hope to catch you in my next one. Hey, I know this might sound cheesy, but I definitely think it's important to thank the people that make it possible for me to do what I love doing, and that's testing inverters and batteries and power stations, going to trade shows, interviewing company representatives, all those sorts of things within the solar industry. It's because of you that I'm able to do that, and I want to say thank you for supporting the channel thus far, whether it's one thumbs up, one comment, subscribing to the channel, watching every video that I got, or just watching this one single video. It does help me and I do appreciate everyone, whether you give me negative feedback or not, I always take it constructive and I always try to build a better channel. And I will always, my promise to you guys, I will always, always, always try to put out 
quality content that gives you value. And I hope to be able to do that for a very long time. But I did want to say thank you to everyone that supports my channel.